welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar and this is the first course on samasa we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिलन जगत चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया In this course, we are focused on the Tatpurusha Samasa. Tatpurusha Samasa is one of the major types of samasas in Sanskrit. Avyayi bhava, Tatpurusha, Bahuvrihi, and Dvandva are the four types of samasas stated in Sanskrit in this particular order in the grammar of Padini in the text of. Ashtadhyayi. We have also noted that Tatpurusha is by far the most productive of the samasas in Sanskrit. The number of sutras composed by Panini to account for various features of the Tatpurusha samasa are very many in comparison with the sutras. composed to describe such similar features of other types of samasas be it samasa vidhayak sutra be it samasa ant pratyaya vidhayak sutra or swara vidhayak sutra in all these cases the sutras composed to describe the tatpurusha samasa are more than other types of samasas this goes to show the importance of the tatpurusha samasa in sanskrit and also in paninian grammar we also said that the tatpurusha samasa has got a number of varieties which is not the case with the other types of samasas and we have studied them one by one in this particular course so far first we studied the vibhakti tatpurusha samasa very important and the vibhaktis are dvitiya vibhakti tatpurusha tritiya chaturthi panchami saptami and shashthi in this particular order as is given in the grammar of panini in the text of ashtadhyayi then we studied karma dharaya samasa we also in the course studied the dvigu samasa following which we studied the nay tatpurusha after which we studied the ekadeshi tatpurusha after which we studied the gati tatpurusha samasa following which we started studying the upapada tatpurusha samasa and currently we are studying the upapada tatpurusha samasa the features of the tatpurusha samasa can be stated in the form of a simple equation in this particular manner where we have x and y as two independent two separate elements independent and separate in terms of meaning conveyed word form as well as the accent however these word forms are semantically interrelated and so the speaker of sanskrit decides to merge these two forms together and form the output in the form of one entity xy the feature of this xy is that 
why acts as a head of this particular unit. So xy is one unit and it is one unit in terms of meaning as well as word form as well as accent. So there are three features, aikarathya, aikapadya and also aikasvarya. Now within xy, y acts as a head which means that when xy as one unit is interrelated with any other word in the sentence, this interrelation happens only through y. x is not related to any other word in the sentence without going through y. If x is interrelated with any other word in the sentence without going through y, such a samasa is treated as an exception and is termed as a samartha samasa. We are studying the Upapada Tatpurusha Samasa right now. This Upapada Tatpurusha Samasa is stated by the Sutra Upapadam Ating. And this Sutra has got two Padas, Upapadam and Ating. Upapadam is 1 slash 1, which means the word designated as Upapada. This is by the Sutra 3192, Tatra Upapadam Saptami Stham. Now, because the word Upapadam is stated in 1 slash 1, it is termed as Upasarjana because of the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam and then because of the Sutra Upasarjanam Purvam, this word in the Prathama Vibhakti will occupy the initial position of the Samasa. This is known as Purva Nipata. The other word in the sutra is ating, which is also one slash one, which means which is not a thing. Eventually it means which is not a thinganta, which is not a word ending in a thing. Words continued are sup and sahasupa and also samartha padavidhi. So the meaning of the sutra is the following. Any subanta whose pratipadikas are designated as upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a tinganta. I repeat, any subanta whose pratipadikas are designated as upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a tinganta. Now this translation raises certain questions. First amongst them is the following. What is the need of the word ating in the sutra? What it implies is that what is achieved by this particular negation? The question arises because when we make not a thing and a condition for this sutra to apply, the only other available option through this negation is that of a Subanta, because we have subtingantam padam as the definition of pada. So when tinganta is negated, what remains as a pada is only a subanta. Now this is available to us, we know, anyway, because of the continuation of the word sup and sahasupa. So then what is the need of the word ating? What is achieved by this particular negation? And in spite of these questions, we note that Panini continues with the word ating. So we are forced then to think that in this particular sutra, the basic condition of sup and sahasupa does not apply, rather sup and sah will only apply in this particular sutra. So the skeleton of this particular samasa would be as follows. The first element of the samasa is a subanta ending in su and the second member is not a subanta. It does not end in su. But now a thing gives us a purpose and that purpose is that the second member of the samasa has 
Prakrit suffix. So, there are two types of suffixes which are added after a verbal root. One is krit and the other one is thing. Now, when a thing is a negation, the purpose of this negation is to bring about the samasa with respect to krit. So, the output of the samasa is a pratipadika plus su, this is the purvapada, plus dhatu plus krit. This is the second part of the compound. And so, supadhatu pratipadika yoga will apply and will delete the su in the purvapada. So, the compound output would be the pratipadika of the purvapada plus the dhatu plus krit, which is the second part of the compound. Now we are studying some more sutras in the section 321-101. We have noted that 3284 is the sutra bhute from which the suffix is stated will be governed by the adhikara bhute. What it means is that the suffix is stated hereafter from 3286 onwards up to 3201, they will indicate the sense of karta by default, but they will also additionally convey the meaning of past tense. Now, in this sutra Karmani Hanaha, which is 3286, there are two padas, Karmani as well as Hanaha. Karmani is 7 slash 1, which means when the upapada is related to the action denoted by the verbal root as an object or karma. Hanaha is 5 slash 1, which means immediately after the verbal root hana to kill. Words continued are dhatoho from 3191, which means immediately after the verbal root. Pratyayaha 311, Tatropapadam Saptamistham 3192, Krudating 3193. So the meaning of the sutra is the following. The suffix srinini is added in the sense of karta and also past tense to the verbal root hana when upapada is related to the action denoted by the verbal root hana as karma. I repeat, the suffix nini is added in the sense of karta and also past tense to the verbal root hana when the upapada is related to the action denoted by the verbal root hana as karma. So we have Pitru Vyam Ahan, one who killed the Pitru Vya, the uncle, the brother of the father. And so we have Pitru Vya plus Am plus Hana plus Nini as the Alaukika Vigraha. Now the Samasa Saudhnya takes place. So the Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place and then Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and we have Pitruvya plus zero plus Hana plus in. And so this Ana marker in the suffix Nini is deleted but it causes the Ha getting substituted by Gha first and also A in Hana getting substituted by A. So we have Pitrubya plus zero plus Ghan plus in and then because of the suffix nin, n in Hana is substituted by ta. So we have Pitrubya plus zero plus Ghata plus in and so finally we get the derived output Pitrubya Ghatin. Which means the same as Pitruvyam Ahan. Now, the Vartika statement here says that this word stands for an element of censure. Kutsita Grahanam Kartavyam. 
Pitruvyaghatin is not just a factual statement, but there also but there is also a sense of censure involved in the process of compounding. Pitruvya Ghatin. The next sutra is Drashehe Kvanip 3294. In this sutra, there are two padhas, Drashehe as well as Kvanip. Drashehe is 5 slash 1, which means immediately after the verbal root Drasha, meaning to see. Kvanip is 1 slash 1 of Kvanip, and Kvanip means the suffix 1. K is the marker and P is also the marker. So the words continued are Dhatoho from 3191, which means immediately after a verbal root. Pratyayaha, Pratyayaha continues from 311. Tatropapadam Saptamistham also continues from 3192. The thing is also present from 3193. So the meaning of the sutra is the following. The suffix kwanip is added in the sense of karta and also past tense to the verbal root drusha when upapada is related to the action denoted by the verbal root as karma. I repeat, the suffix kwanip is added in the sense of karta and also past tense to the verbal root drusha when the upapada is related to the action denoted by the verbal root drusha as karma. So when the meaning to be conveyed is one who saw the other world, paralokam apashyat, one who saw the other world. So in this sense, Paralokam Apashyat is the Laukika Vigraha and the Alaukika Vigraha would be Paraloka plus Am plus Drusha plus Kwanip. Now the Samasa Saudhnya takes place and so the Pratipadika Saudhnya also takes place. So Supadhatu Pratipadika Yoho will apply and so we have Paraloka plus 0 plus Drusha plus 1. And then we join them together and we get the form Paraloka Drishwan, meaning Paralokam Apashyat, one who saw the other world. Then we go to the next sutra, Saptamyam Janeridaha, 3297. Sutra is Saptamyam Janer. Daha. There are three padas in the sutra, Saptamyam, which is 7 slash 1, Janer and Daha. Saptamyam is 7 slash 1, meaning word ending in 7th case is the Upapada. Janer is 5 slash 1 of Jani, referring to the verbal root Jana, meaning to be born. So Janer means immediately after the verbal root Jana to be born. Daha is 1 slash 1 of de and de is a marker though so the suffix is a. This de marker triggers the deletion of an in jan. Words continued are dhatoho 3191 immediately after the verbal root, pratyayaha from 311, tatropapadam saptamistham is present 3192. Kridating is also present, 3193. So the meaning of the sutra is the following. The suffix de is added in the sense of karta and past tense to the verbal root jana when upapada ends in the seventh case. I repeat, the suffix de is added in the sense of karta and also past tense to the verbal root jana when upapada ends in the seventh case. So here we have mandurayam jataha and mandura plus ni plus jana plus da, this is the alaukika vigraha 
and so samasa saudhnya takes place so the pratipadika saudhnya takes place so supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and where we have mandura plus zero plus jana plus a and then mandura is shortened to mandura mandura plus zero plus jana plus a and then the an in jana is deleted so we have mandura plus zero plus j plus a and the finally derived output is mandura j which means the same thing as mandurayam jataha mandura j the next sutra is panchamyam ajatau 3298 This sutra has got two padas, Panchamyam and Ajatau. Panchamyam is 7 slash 1 and Ajatau is also 7 slash 1. So Panchamyam means word ending in the fifth triplet and that is the Upapada. And Ajatau is 7 slash 1 which means not the generic property. Words continued are Dhatoho. From 3191, meaning immediately after a verbal root, Pratyayaha 311, Tatropapadam Saptamistham is present from 3192, Kridating is present from 3193. Janer is continued from the previous sutra. Janer is 5 slash 1, meaning immediately after the verbal root, Jana. to be born daha is also continued from the previous sutra this is one slash one of d which is having the marker d and so this suffix a which has got the marker d triggers the deletion of an in jana so now the meaning of the sutra is the following the suffix d is added in the sense of karta and also past tense to the verbal root jana when upapada ends in the fifth case and which does not denote a generic property i repeat the suffix d is added in the sense of karta and also past tense to the verbal root jana when upapada ends in the fifth case and which does not denote a generic property now following this when we have the meaning to be conveyed namely one who is born from the intellect one who is born from the intellect then we have buddhehe jataha as the laukika vigraha and the alaukika vigraha would be buddhi plus ngasi plus jana plus d and then the samasa saudhnya takes place and the pratipadika saudhnya also takes place so supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and so the sup is deleted so we have buddhi plus 0 plus jana plus d jana plus a and then finally because of the marker d an in jana is also deleted so we have buddhi plus 0 plus j plus a and the finally derived compound output is buddhi j buddhi j which means the same thing as buddhehe jataha similarly when the meaning to be conveyed is one which is born out of sorrow dukhat jataha and the compound output would be dukha jaha and one who is born out of impression when this meaning is to be conveyed samskarat jataha this will be the laukika vigraha and the compound derived is samskara jaha now we go to the next sutra upasarge cha saudnyayam this is 3299 upasarge cha saudnyayam this sutra has got three padas upasarge 7/1 which means when the preverb is the upapada cha and also saudnyayam cha means and 
and saudhnyayam is 7 slash 1 meaning that when the technical term is designated by the compound words continued are dhatoho 3191 which means immediately after a verbal root pratyayaha 311 Tatropapadam Saptamistam is present from 3192. Kridating is present from 3193. Janer is continued from phi, from the previous sutra. Janer is phi slash 1, which means immediately after the verbal root jana to be born. Daha is also continued from the previous sutra. Daha is one slash one of de. A is the suffix with the marker de. This marker de triggers the deletion of an in jan. So the meaning of the sutra is the following. The suffix de is added in the sense of karta and past tense to the verbal root jana when upapada is an upasarga and when the compound designates a term. I repeat, the suffix de is added in the sense of karta and also past tense to the verbal root jana when the upapada is an upasarga and the compound designates a term. So when the meaning to be conveyed is one who is born prajataha the compound output is praja, we follow the same procedure stated earlier and so we get praja as the compound output and the feminine form would be praja, one who is born. Then we have the final sutra in this particular section which is Aneshuvapi Trishyate. This sutra has got three padas, Anyeshu, Api and Drishyate. Anyeshu is 7 slash 3 when any other word is the Upapada, that is the meaning. Api means also, Drishyate means is seen. Words continued are Dhatoho from 3191 which means immediately after a verbal root, Pratyayaha from 311, Tatropapadam Saptamistham and Kridating, they are present from 3192 and 93 respectively. Janair and Daha, they are also continued from the previous sutras. And so, Janehe is 5 slash 1, which means immediately after the verbal root Jana to be born. And Daha is 1 slash 1 of D. The suffix is A with the marker D. And this marker D triggers the deletion of an in jan. So the meaning of the sutra is the following. The suffix d is added in the sense of karta and also past tense to the verbal root jana when the upapada is any word and even if the compound does not designate a term. I repeat, the suffix d is added in the sense of karta and past tense to the verbal root jana when upapada is any word and even if the compound does not designate a term. So we have na jataha as the laukika vigraha and a finally derived compound output would be a jaha following the procedure stated earlier. When the, when the laukika vigraha is dvihi jataha somebody who is born twice and the compound output would be dvijaha following the same procedure outlined earlier. Anujataha, when this is the laukika vigraha, the compound output would be anuja. This suffix is also added after any other verbal root with any other upapada also. So, for example, if paritak khata is the laukika vigraha, the compound output will be generated in the form of parikha and then the feminine form 
would be parikha. To summarize, the suffixes in this section mean different karakas. By default, the agent or the karta, but sometimes also the most effective means, namely the karana. There are suffixes which get added after all verbal rules, thereby increasing the accommodating strength of the grammar as a system, enabling the accounting of the new forms generated in the course of time. In the grammar of Panini, Panini uses very rarely the verb in the sutras. The one used in this section denotes the action of seeing, thereby highlighting the basic act of observation needed for a grammarian to formulate rules. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.